This video will be about the live load reduction factor options under the member design parameters. The beam is a RC member and you can find that there are options for live load reduction factor. And this applies for sub beam as well. You will be able to see that this option is available for vertical members. For example, when you select a column, you can still see the options for live load reduction factor. And wall is also a vertical member, so you can see the same options too. We will now see how the factor is calculated referring to the Eurocode standards. You are now looking at an extract from Eurocode EN 1991-1-1. If you look at the heading 6.2.1, Floors, Beams and Roofs, you will see the contents relate to horizontal members. The bracket number 4 states that you can reduce imposed loads from a single category using a reduction factor alpha A. And the paragraph 6.2.2, Columns and Walls, are contents for vertical members. The bracket number 2 on the next page states that you can reduce the load value through alpha n. But here, you should pay attention to from several stories, which means the value may change depending on how many stories it is supporting. To understand what it means by a single category, let's go to table 6.1. Now from this table, the categories A to D depends on the specific use of the building. For example, category A specifies a use for domestic and residential activities. So areas like hospitals, houses, and bedrooms will be relevant to A. And for B will be places like offices as mentioned in the table. C will be areas where more people are congregated. For instance, C1 is for areas with tables, and C2 are with fixed seats. And C3 will be places like museums where there aren't any obstacles for people to move around. C3 also applies for hotels, hospitals, and other public areas and administration buildings too. Further on, category D will be for shopping areas where even more people can be congregated. So the categories are divided by how many people are together and how many objects there are at a specific area. And the value for Q differs for each category. If you look at table 6.2, the categories are divided according to the load values for lowercase qk standing for distributed load. And load values for uppercase QK represents a nodal load or a concentrated load. In short, we can see that the load values are different according to the categories of the loaded areas. Now, that was about categories. Now let's look at how to calculate the values of alpha A and alpha N. Flipping over a few pages, if you look at note 1 on page 23, it shows how the value for alpha A can be calculated for category A to D. Here it says that 5 seventh of psi 0 plus A0 over A should be smaller or equal to 1.0. The alpha A will be multiplied to the load. So the condition for being smaller than 1.0 means that the load will be reduced. The important point to note here is that the alpha A value should be bigger or equal to 0.6 for category C and D. This is because these two categories have an increased likelihood of crowd loading, 
so we should be aware not to decrease the load value too much. So it is stated that the value should be at least 0 0.6. Psi 0 is mentioned in Table A1.1 of Eurocode 1990 Annex A1, and we will have a look into that now. This table A1.1 from Eurocode 1990 shows how much Psi 0 values are according to each category. You can simply apply these values directly. So you can apply the Psi 0 value by referring to the table, and A0 is set to 10 meters squared. So all we have to do is calculate A, which stands for loaded area. Now let's see how the loaded area can be calculated through this picture. Let's say that the floor plan looks like this picture here. This dark gray section will be the girder, and it will take the load of the green surface, which is flashing now. If the girder is located between the columns like this, it will take the load from the floor area above and below. So this girder will take the load from the area highlighted in yellow. And then in the case of sub-beams, they will support the load highlighted in orange, which is flashing right now. This means that it will support the area up to the next sub-beam. This time it's about alpha N, which is applied to vertical members. The alpha N is calculated as shown in equation 6.2, which is dependent on the number of stories. Then how do we calculate the value n? Let's look at this picture here. Let's say there's a building which has five stories from floor 1 to the roof, and it looks like this from elevation. Here at the top, this column only supports the load of the roof, so the value of the n is considered as 1. But then, as we move downward, when the n becomes 2, this second column supports the load for the fourth and roof floor, which makes the value for n 2. And moving one more step down, the column below will be supporting the load for the third, fourth, and roof floor, so the value for n will be 3. Lastly, the column right at the bottom will be supporting the load for second, third, fourth, and roof floor, so the value for the n will be 4. As you see here, the value for n will be different depending on how many floors the column is supporting. Now one thing to be aware, when we are calculating the value for n, the n has to be more than 2. So if we apply a value of 1 or 2 to n, we might not get a correct value. For example, if we consider n as 2, like n equals 2, the alpha value will come out as 1. This means that we are not reducing the load value. So n should always be bigger than 2 to calculate the reduction in the load value. Finally, the value of alpha n can be input by selecting the member and entering a value, for example 0 0.8 and click the OK button for the live load reduction factor to be applied.